Hello everyone, this is Alexandra and welcome to the sixth installment of the programmed series. The information in the previous video is essential to understanding this one, because today we continue answering the question of how programming is done. Obviously, the information will be incomplete or purposefully vague at times, as the totality of the methodologies is irrelevant to grasping the overall process. That being said, this is a technical rundown of the levels of monarch or designer programming, as in how it is done. The information in this video is very dense, which is why it's shorter than the others. You're welcome. Let's get started. Programming is initially installed at ages 4 to 5. Modifications to the original programming can be made later. All trial-based programming must occur before the age of 8. Programmers use mind-altering psychotropic drugs to set the foundations for a system while the child subject is in a sensory deprivation tank. They're not allowed to move or they will be shocked. Basic programs such as alien programming and suicide programming are placed into the system at this time. Then, they will have the subject map in, or create within themselves, the following. The Hell Pit, or a dungeon in castle systems, stars and galaxies which contain parts, the outer space in a system, and the protective program where the mind spreads out like molecules and loses the ability to think. If it helps, you can think of this like how a video game is created. Each piece is built with a purpose. While the subject is in sensory deprivation, the programmer can ask the subject to create the images of guardians or guard parts within the castle images. These image parts are not the same as a trauma-created dissociative alter. Think of these like NPCs, or non-playing characters. A couple of these characters can be seen in the movie Labyrinth, which is a good representation of a trauma-based system. Layer after layer of programming is put in. Each part or fragment is used as if it were a piece of a larger system. The result is that no part or fragment is the whole, it's only a piece. It's very difficult for a single part of thousands in a system made of thousands to rebel. IQ is one factor that determines what level of programming one receives, that is, how important or high up in the ranks they are moved. Now, we're going to talk about the levels of internal programming. The brain has a unique set of brain waves. There are five distinct brain wave frequencies, alpha, beta, theta, delta, and gamma. All of them are Greek words for letters of the alphabet, but they are not necessarily used in alphabetical order, nor are all of them used on one individual. The levels of monarch programming identify the subject's role or functions and are named after the brain waves associated with them. There is alpha, a basic program used for leadership. Alpha programming is also known as the base personality control. This type includes increased memory retention and visual awareness. The programming for Alpha teaches the person triggers, assists in fragmenting the personality, holds the map of the system and the base commands for contacting, calling up of other alters, as well as protection programming and logic programming. Alpha programming lays the foundation for future programming. All subjects in designer programming get Alpha programming, so that other kinds can be installed later. Then there's beta programming. Most entertainers, if not all, are betas of some sort. Beta programming eliminates all learned moral convictions and inhibitions. Beta programming is also known as kitten programming due to beta alters generally seeing themselves as cats, but there are many other forms such as ponies or bear cubs as well. This can be seen depicted with animal prints, cats, rabbits, and Hello Kitty imagery. The archipalium, or so-called primitive part of the brain, is involved in this type of programming. An early sexual abuse event will be used to anchor this form of programming. This programming also has to do with production and direction of CP. There is a measurement in beta programming called the star system. The system is 1 to 5. Each star is used for a sexual marker. Please note that not all sexual alters are a result of beta programming. Then there's gamma. Gamma programming is twofold. One portion includes deception, which is used for disinformation purposes to disguise and mislead others. It will provide misinformation, try to misdirect you, tell you half-truths, in an attempt to protect different things inside. The other portion is intertwined with demonology. 
It holds all the demonic and occult activity a programmer lays in. Deeper sections or levels have a Kabbalistic tree of life built in where the programmer lays occult and magic altars. In the high level, transgenerational family slaves, deeper parts of the system are ritually created and the demonology pertains to the various rituals that are done. Blood rituals are used to attach demons to possess altars in a particular way. These rituals cannot be separated from the programming. They are part of the programming. Delta programming. Deltas are activated to kill by the following three things. Seeing specific clothing, items held in a person's hand, and particular words or phrases. Each scenario is unique. Delta programming was originally developed for training special agents or elite soldiers. This programming enhances the person's aggression. However, it's done so in a controlled manner. They are skilled in the art of combat. The person's physical and pain thresholds are elevated. It also removes fears such as the fear of death or suffering. Delta programming layers in blind loyalty to the mission so it can be completed. Suicide programming is often a part of Delta programming. Epsilon Epsilon programming is the programming of animal altars into the subject. They are put into cages where they are treated like the animal chosen by the programmer to create that altar. For example, a dog. Shock treatments would be administered until the subject agrees to the programmer's demands, such as eating out of a dog food bowl, barking, and other things too graphic to mention. Epsilon programming elements are often added to other forms of programming to increase the effect in a specific direction. For example, Epsilon Beta would equal Sex Kitten. Epsilon programming is used widely in the sex industry. The intent is to give them attributes their handler will want or need. Then there's Theta programming. Theta programming is reportedly used for psychic warfare. It also is a more future-oriented kind of programming with psychic weaponry and the like. Subjects from various bloodlines were experimented on and the results allegedly showed that bloodlines from transgenerational occult families exhibited a greater propensity for having telepathic abilities than did non-bloodliners. Theta brain waves are slow and relaxing waves that arise when we are dreaming, sleepy, emotional, relaxed, or daydreaming. This state is associated with the bridge between the physical body and the spiritual realms. Many spiritual experiences and phenomena are commonly experienced in the theta brainwave state. Theta programming is created to use the psychic, spiritual realms, or occult, as in hidden realms, to monitor other people who are programmed and to keep the person who is programmed programmed. Theta brain waves can be reached if the subject has been injured because they are associated with healing, as in when the body repairs itself. Theta programming is also linked to pi programming. Omega. The Omega programming, or Code Green, works along with an executive control board also called a Grand Druidic Council and internal programmers. This is a self-destruct or self-harm based program placed into all programmed subjects. This is also referred to as the Freedom Train, meaning if one does not comply with return home programming, they will activate suicide or self-destruct programming or Code Green. There is also Lambda and Psi programming, but little is known or recovered about those. Omicron programming relates to programming of subjects regarding activities between intelligence agencies, the mafia, and government, such as drug trafficking. Pi, Pi programming holds ritual altars created out of, and who participate in, blood rituals, sacrifices, and ceremonies. These include internal witches, warlocks, seers, psychics, readers, and occult practitioners. Sigma is another unknown. Chi programming is installed in order to get subjects to reassemble a packaged ideology or religious belief. It is the equivalent of calling in or coming in in the language of secretive intelligence agencies, as it will make a sleeper subject return from any level of ideological digression or apathy to core beliefs they may not even be aware rules them. On the cultural level, it is an instrument of social engineering to make sure that one programmer's agenda, such as multiculturalism, does not exceed certain boundaries. Specific ideologies are pushed, such as nationalism, racist positions, or religions. Whenever programmers deem it necessary, the Kai programming is invoked and unfolded, dragging subjects in the opposite direction, for instance, towards nationalism and racist positions. 
Alternatively, the multicultural vision can be furthered when it suits the programmer's agenda, overriding patriotism and ethnic cultural loyalties. Not much is known regarding Psy or Zeta other than reports that Zeta is associated with production of material regarding death or murder on camera. Allegedly, the CIA has also been labeling their mind-controlled slaves by the following. Delta series are models for espionage as well as assassination. Kilo 5 series is military espionage. Michael 1 series slaves are CIA agents under total mind control. And Juliet 7 series sex slaves for espionage. A quick review of main levels. Alpha programming for leaders, beta programming for sex slaves, and delta programming for killers. There's also omega programming, self-destruct, and gamma programming, deception. I've left a link to the video in the transcript of the Green Bomb speech below. The speech is a lecture from June 25th of 1992 by Dr. Corydon Hammond, originally entitled Hypnosis in MPD RA, which is known as the Green Bomb speech. This speech is well known as a reference regarding TBMC. I want to make one quick note about it. In the speech, Hammond says that programs and backups can be erased by giving appropriate codes. While this was correct for survivors he worked with, who would have been born in the early 1930s and would have likely had universal codes for some of the programs. This was due to limited technology available for programming and limited knowledge of programming methods at the time. However, due to advances in technology, this cannot be done today. Sometimes electric currents are passed through the brain, intentionally triggering a brief seizure. This assists with dissociation and programming. Currently, electronic instruments are used for brainwave manipulation. The following explains how the programmers alter brain chemistry to reach the desired brainwave activity for specific programming. The predominant brainwave frequencies indicate the kind of activity taking place in the brain. There are four basic groups of brainwave frequencies which are associated with most mental activity. The first group, beta waves, is associated with normal activity. The high end of this range is associated with stress or agitated states which can impair thinking and reasoning skills. The second group, alpha waves, can indicate relaxation. Alpha frequencies are ideal for learning and focused mental functioning. The third group, theta waves, indicates mental imagery, access to memories, and internal mental focus. This state is often associated with young children, behavioral modification, and sleep dream states. The last group, ultra-slow delta waves, is found when a person is in deep sleep. The general rule is that the brain's predominant wave frequency will be lowest in terms of pulses per second when a person is relaxed and highest when a person is most alert or agitated. External stimulation of the brain by electromagnetic means can cause the brain to be entrained or locked into phase with an external signal generator. Predominant brain waves can be driven or pushed into new frequency patterns by external stimulation. In other words, the external signal driver or impulse generator entrains the brain, overriding the normal frequencies and causing changes in the brain waves, which then cause changes in brain chemistry, which then cause changes in brain outputs in the form of thoughts, emotions, or physical condition. As you are driven, so you arrive. Brain manipulation can be either beneficial or detrimental to the individual being impacted, depending on the level of knowledge or the intentions of the person controlling the technology. In combination with specific wave forms, the various frequencies trigger precise chemical responses in the brain. The release of these neurochemicals causes specific reactions in the brain, which result in feelings of fear, lust, depression, love, etc. All of these, and the full range of emotional and intellectual responses, are caused by very specific combinations of these brain chemicals, which are released by frequency-specific electrical impulses. Precise mixtures of these brain juices can produce extraordinarily specific mental states, such as fear of the dark, or intense concentration. The work in this area is advancing at a very rapid rate, with new discoveries being made regularly. Scripts are used during programming. Programmers uniquely tailor the scripts to each subject. Programming does not occur without the use of a script. The Wizard of Oz, 
Alice in Wonderland, and other books are read prior to the actual programming session. This will enhance the programming of the subject's ability to retain the script. Some of the foundational scripts used in programming themes, both built on occult symbolism, include The Wizard of Oz or Alice in Wonderland. The scripts are used to assist with building internal worlds. These stories are complex and imaginative, which makes them perfect for the subject to create an alternate world based on the imagery. A film's symbols, characters, maps, and quotes are used to build the subject's internal landscape, such as the movie Labyrinth, Fantasia, and many more. Disney has its own category of programming named after it. In general, this programming uses Disney movies as scripts, maps, trigger phrases, and to assist in building a system. The characters and actors in the movies are used as personality templates for alters. The scripts give the programmer the ability to layer in the information they want the subject to have. Scripts consist of four parts. One, an identifier, subject's name, description, or other identifying factor. Two, trigger activation conditions, how, when, or what the suggestion will trigger. Three, the content, what the trigger will precipitate in the perception of the subject. Four, and a duration, when or under what conditions it will stop or finish. Additional scripts are usually added to strengthen or reinforce the central post-hypnotic command. The programmer will play the chosen film for the subject. They are told they will be quizzed about the movie, which causes them to use photographic recall about what they see. The programmer may show the subject an edited version of the movie with only parts of the whole, or may show the subject a short scene from the movie. Afterwards, they're drugged and then question about what they remember. The subject will be punished by electroshock if they cannot recall what the programmer questions them about and will be forced to watch the scenes again. When the subject passes these tests, the programmer will tell the subject that they are one of the characters. The subject will then be traumatized and create a split, or a blank slate part created to be the desired character. The film is shown to the child while they are being traumatized. This allows them a place to escape to. The first thing the new piece will see is footage of the movie or the scene. This is its first memory. The programmer will link the scene with lessons such as concealed meanings in the movie. The script programming is often linked to other programming the subject is undergoing. Music from the film will be used as a trigger to access those parts. The programming will be anchored with repetition, electroshock, torture, drugging, and hypnosis. The alters inside who have gone through this programming will often be highly disconnected from external reality and may believe that they are a part of a script. The programmers hypnotically make the lyrics of songs cues for subjects. Newly released songs can reinforce standard programming. The programmers will create a playlist of songs tailored to the subject. During torture, the songs will be played with the lyrics used as the script. A specific alter will be given the script and the task to follow. Songs are used that fit the script being used for internal world building. Wizard of songs are used in foundation programming. Disney songs are used in Disney programs specific to the music. Trigger phrases are found in music, as well as symbols in the videos of the music. The symbols help reinforce internal programming across structures. This is the reason the rest of us see their symbols so often. Christmas carols and nursery rhymes are heavily used in programming. Books would have been used before films which is why many programming scripts are based on books like Alice in Wonderland. E.T.A. Hoffman was an occultist who wrote many poems and shorts in the 19th century, with the same themes used in common scripts, like anchoring trauma, mysticism, automatons, mind-altering elixirs, hallucinations, changes in identities and amnesia, as well as parallel worlds. Most are familiar with Hoffman through his story The Nutcracker and the Mouse King, on which Tchaikovsky's ballet The Nutcracker is based. Classical music has its own place in programming, but that is beyond the scope of this video. Art is another avenue heavily used in programming. One example would be the art of M.C. Escher. In more modern times, things like Disney movies and cartoons began to be used in two ways. One, to desensitize the majority of the population to various things by using subliminals and neurolinguistic programming, which is essentially what we covered in part one of the series. 
The methodology of neurolinguistic programming, or NLP, includes embedded verbal commands, body postures, and hand motions which can influence another person without their knowledge. It can be used in the therapy setting, a sales presentation, a court of law, cults, or any interpersonal interaction. It is also used for the purpose of mind control. And two, to deliberately construct specific triggers for base programming of impressionable children in the monarch program. Internal structures of a subject are important for many reasons. Some include 1. Mapping the system 2. Keeping parts in their assigned areas 3. Giving parts a world they can navigate 4. Triggering specific events or actions in a timed manner 5. Cause confusion if the system is breached 6. Reinforce programmed behaviors 7. Give the programmer means to access the system. 8. Build system hierarchy. A few of the internal images predominantly seen by victims, survivors, are trees, the Kabbalistic tree of life with adjoining root systems, infinity loops, ancient symbols and letters, spider webs, mirrors or glass shattering, masks, castles, mazes, demons, monsters, or aliens, seashells, butterflies, snakes, ribbons, bows, flowers, hourglasses, clocks, robots, chain of command diagrams, schematics of computer circuitry boards. Broken mirrors are symbolic in representing the fracturing of one's mind. I've left a link to a site that outlines common programs observed that you can find in the description below. One powerful symbol placed within a system is the willow tree, which represents the occultic powers of druidism. This imagery is seen in Pocahontas. Remember how I said newly released songs can reinforce standard programming? Well, Taylor Swift's song off her album Evermore is entitled Willow, in which she is dressed as a druid. This song has seven witch-themed remixes. There's even willow tree programming that involves the intrinsic symbolism of the tree's branches, leaves, and root systems. Some examples of this programming include the branches are used to whip victims in rituals for cleansing purposes. Victims or survivors of the programming describe the willow's branches wrapping around them with no hope of escape. The deep root system of the willow tree makes the victim and survivor feel as if they are falling deeper and deeper into an abyss while in a hypnotic trance. A partial list of other common media used to reinforce base programming. Sleeping Beauty, Snow White, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, The Little Mermaid, The Lion King, E.T., Star Wars, Ghostbusters, Trancers 2, Batman, Bewitched, Fantasy Island, Reboot, Tiny Toons, DuckTales, The Tall Book of Make-Believe, Pinocchio, a few movies which depict or portray some aspect of monarch programming are Hellraiser 3, Raising Cain, Labyrinth, Telephon, Johnny Mnemonic, Point of No Return, The Lawnmower Man, Closetland, The Butterfly Effect. You must understand the depth of time, money, dedication, and motivation put into programming a subject. Simply put, the goal is money, and power or control. The first part of this series explored the aspects of control we are all subject to via control of society at large, especially through the entertainment industries. In the next and final part of the program series, we're going to come full circle and take another look at symbolism in the entertainment industry, as well as look at the hierarchical structure 
of the world you and I live in. Thank you all for watching this video. I will see you again soon.